Hello, my name is Tony Dong. Aunt May knows Peter's secret in Spider-Man Homecoming. It could mean big trouble ahead for all the crazy things that happen in Spider-Man Homecoming. The Clive Hanger ending has got to be the most exciting. Don't worry, the new movie doesn't end with Spider-Man in peril, at least not from a bad guy. Whether or not he's safe from his aunt's anger at TBD. Spoilers ahead. Aunt May knows Peter's secret in Spider-Man Homecoming, and it's going to change everything. Aunt May spends a majority of Homecoming in blissful ignorance of her beloved nephew's supercurricular activities, but all that changes when Spider-Man Homecoming ends with May walking in on Peter wearing his Spider-Man suit. Aunt May finding out that Peter is Spider-Man changes everything going forward. Audiences don't get to see her full reaction to the news in the movie, but based on her outraged scream, it's safe to assume that May does not approve. What does this mean for Spider-Man and his involvement in Avengers Infinity War and a potential sequel? And how will Aunt May knowing affect the web-slinger's future as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Well, it could mean a lot of different things plot-wise, but hopefully, whatever the consequences, May knowing the truth will mean more screen time for the character and Marissa Tomer, the actor that plays her. Aunt May knowing Peter's secret could mean one of two things. Either Peter will have a supportive adult there to take care of him when he's injured and help him navigate his superhero high school balance, or Aunt May will do everything in her power to keep him from being Spider-Man. If May reacts the way any other guardian of a 15-year-old would and decides to lock Peter up in his room, then this puts a serious roadblock in Peter's way when it comes to joining the Avengers in Infinity War. Now, it's already been confirmed that Spidey will be fighting alongside the Avengers in their next film, and assuming he sneaks out, he's going to need a really, really good alibi. If May had her doubts before, She's certainly not going to buy Peter's story about his Stark internship anymore. Everyone knows that Tony Stark is Iron Man, and May isn't stupid. She's going to realize that Tony has been encouraging her nephew's superhero antics sooner or later. I, for one, really hope we get to see what happens when Aunt May confronts Tony about his involvement in Peter's double life. Preferably while also dragging Peter by the ear and with Pepper Potts watching and nodding approvingly in the background. It would also be cool to see her get more involved in Spider-Man's mission. Fans of Spider-Man have never really seen Aunt May be involved in her nephew's crime fighting on the big screen, and it could be a fun way to build an interesting female character within the superhero world. However, that seems pretty unlikely given Spidey's status as a teenage superhero. Most likely, we'll get to see maybe conflicted, get in harm's way, be rescued by Peter, and hopefully give some good dating advice as he starts a romance with Michelle fingers crossed on that one. How Aunt May will handle the revelation that Peter Parker is Spider-Man is really anybody's guess at this point. I just hope we don't have to wait until the sequel to find out. Thank you for watching. For the follow up, subscribe to the channel yourself here. The schoolmate Laura Harrier, and produced more gloopy stuff, with a flick of the wrist, than he knows what to do with. To be honest, Spider-Man is not the natural enemy of tools. He's more of a fellow grump. They should join forces, not fight. Peel away the standard Marvel plava, including a confused and redundant climax in midair, and what impels Spider-Man Homecoming is the politics of the pist, is a venerably a, if you prefer, stalid tradition whereby older or more seasoned performers are slipped into superhero films to lend them gravity and heft. But what do these senior souls get out of the deal? What was in for Willem Dafoe Green Goblin in the earlier Spider-Man films? Jeff Bridges Iron Munger in Iron Man, or Michael Douglas the Bearded Sage in Ant-Man, aside from a turbo-boosted paycheck? Things are different, however, with Michael Caitlin on the case, for one practical reason 28 years ago, long before he became the rusty grouch of Spider-Man Homecoming, 
He was a superhero, too. His was the mouth that pursed so tight below the rubber hood in Tim Burton's Batman, and throughout the new film, which is directed by John Watts, Caton gives off an old and weary empathy, as if to say, been there, done that, flown here, whack this and believe me, kiddo, the buzz wears off pretty soon. Good luck spinning cobwebs for a living. You'll probably wind up like me, collecting scrap. That's why the movie's most effective scene contains no special effects. It consists of tombs, framed mostly in close-up, giving a ride to Peter, who sits in the back, glancing at him in the rearview mirror, and asking him politely about his plans. At the start of the short journey, Toombs doesn't know the true identity of his passenger. By the end, he knows. There are no blurted confessions, no threats. Faces alone tell the tale. What any superhero film needs, you might argue, is not a magic spider bite or a dose of atomic irradiation but the gift of time. Actually being a superhero is a kinetic but somewhat formulaic existence, coolly accoutred yet perilously friendless hence the desperate air of multiple playdates that wafts through the Avengers saga, and ever dependent on a steady supply of baddies. But having once been a superhero or, at the other end of age, yearning to be one but finding yourself thwarted to the predicaments that, despite the darkness of the genre, seem touched with human frailty and interest, and they explain the minor charm of Watts' film. Some viewers warmed to the Wasia's pose of Deadpool, but its blend of the cynical and the savage struck me as deeply unappetizing, whereas the spectacle of Spider-Man trying out a doomy voice on a low-grade crook who kindly offers him some free advice, saying, you've got to get better at that part of the job retains a welcome touch of innocence. More memorable still is the wide shot of our hero, clad in scarlet and perched as lonely as a robin on the front of a train as it clatters through the city, texting as he goes. The fate of the planet, thank heaven, is not his concern. He just wants to grow up. Is its footing. Watts has a poppy visual sense and a firm command of the frame. One sequence, wherein an injured and demoralized Peter must extricate himself from a pile of rubble is a loving homage to a famous sequence of Steve Ditko panels from Amazing Spider-Man No. 33, published 51 years ago. Homecoming is the kind of winning film that could set him up for another half century. Or at least until Holland is a washed up 27-year-old.